Hello and welcome! In today's video I'll be ranking all the incarnations of the Master from my least favourite to favourite. I won't be including any of the Masters from Big Finish played by Alex McQueen, Gina McKee, Mark Gatiss, James Dreyfus and Milo Parker. Not because I don't consider them to be canon, but mainly because I haven't listened to many of them so it would be pointless for me to include them in this video. So without any further ado, let's begin! At number 9 we have Eric Roberts' Master. Now don't get me wrong, I actually really like this incarnation of the Master, which might surprise a lot of people, but he is often voted as the worst Master. While he is very camp and over the top incarnation, he still makes for great viewing as he does have some really funny lines of dialogue in the TV movie, which I do know a lot of people don't like, but I have a real soft spot for it. Of course, what many people remember about this Master is the really cringeworthy and quite infamous line, I always dress for the occasion which I would say is one of the worst lines in history. At number 8 we have Michelle Gomez's master, or Missy as she prefers to call herself. I was actually quite shocked when Stephen Moffat took a bit of a gamble with the female master and Michelle Gomez turned out to be a brilliant choice. I know there are a lot of fans out there who really aren't sold on this incarnation of the master, but in my opinion Michelle Gomez has really made the character her own and is so well loved by a lot of Doctor Who fans. Because of her popularity she was given her own big finish spin-off, which sadly I haven't listened to yet. Capaldi and Gomez really bounce off each other well on screen and it's quite cool to see both the Doctor and the Master being played by Scottish actors. What I will say is that there is one scene that really made me cringe in the penultimate episode of series 10, World Enough in Time, where Missy dabbed. That is something I can never imagine the Master doing and it's become so dated now sadly. At number 7 we have Anthony Ainley's Master. Now even though I do really enjoy Anthony Ainley's Master, I will admit that this particular incarnation is quite similar to the Eric Roberts Master in terms of how camp and over the top he is. In Anthony Ainley's performance, it sometimes feels like he's in a pantomime with his expressions and mannerisms. Anthony Ainley was and still is the longest running actor to play the master, as we saw him come face to face with Tom Baker, Peter Davison, Colin Baker and Sylvester McCoy. Despite his fairly over the top performances, Anthony Ainley's master did add a little bit of charisma to the character, which is something that Roger Delgado's master didn't do. At number six, we have John Sims' master. I know there are quite a few fans out there who really can't stand this master because of the way he was written. While I can understand this issue, I do think John Sim is a very underrated master, even though he is such a great actor in my opinion. And it's quite interesting that Russell T Davis wrote this master to be a very mad and quite a bombastic character. One of the reasons that John Sim's master doesn't quite work for me is because of the way he was written in The End of Time. I could do an entire video on why I don't like that story. Having the master shouting dinner time was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in Doctor Who. With that said, it was great to see him return in the series 10 finale with Michelle Gomez as he was with a much better costume and appearance as well as having a great chemistry with uh, Michelle Gomez's master. At number 5 we have Peter Pratt's master. The Deadly Assassin is one of the greatest stories from the Tom Baker era and it's well remembered for having a master that looks completely horrifying and very different from Delgado's master. There must have been an awful lot of pressure on Peter Pratt as Roger Delgado was so iconic as the master so it would have been difficult to form his own incarnation. Because the Deadly Assassin was so well written, you really feel like this is definitely the master in his way his character is written and performed. Peter Pratt was incredibly creepy in the Deadly Assassin, which makes him one of the most memorable masters we've ever had. I quite admire the show for taking the master in a completely different direction. At number 4 we have Sasha Dewan's master. One of the most unexpected things to happen in the Chibnall era was to see the master come back. It was only a few series ago when we last saw the character, and so when we saw him reveal himself in Spyfall Part 1, it was a great surprise and it made for a good cliffhanger. Sasha Darwan really brings so much energy to the master, and you can just tell that he has a really good understanding of the character. This particular master is an incredibly vicious incarnation that's always full of rage, unlike the previous masters who are motivated by ego or insanity. Even though he sometimes feels like John Sims' master, Sasha Dawan does make the master his own as he actually has some really good scenes with Jodie's Doctor. At number 3 we have Jeffrey Beavers' master. I absolutely love the fourth Doctor story, The Keeper of Traken, and Jeffrey Beavers is one of the main reasons why. Beavers' master is such a great voice for the character and manages to make him even creepier than Peter Pratt's master. I also think that the prosthetics that are used for this master are an improvement to what we saw in The Deadly Assassin, even though I do think that master still looks quite effective. If you listen to the Big Finish audios, then I highly recommend listening to the short trip called I Am The Master, which is absolutely incredible, as it is roughly 40 minutes of Jeffrey Beavers' amazing voice. At number 2 we have Derek Jacobi's master. 
Now, you might be wondering why I've placed Derek Jacoby's Master so high on the list, but that's because of how great of a twist we were given in the Series 3 three-part finale, Utopia. It's a testament to Derek Jacoby's incredible acting, as we see him play a very kind and thoughtful professor, who realised that the Professor Yarno was actually an invention created by himself as a disguise. Even though this master is only on screen for a short period of time, Derek Jacoby gives one of the greatest performances as the Doctor's arch nemesis. If you're a fan of this master, then I highly recommend listening to the first box set of the War Master series from Big Finish called Only the Good. At number one, we have Roger Delgado's master. The very first actor to play the master, and in my opinion, none of the actors who came after Delgado have come close. Delgado, for me, is the master, and he was absolutely flawless when it came down to his, any of his performances. He had a fantastic debut in Terror of the Autons, as well as another debut from Katie Manning's Joe Grant. For me, Roger Delgado's master and John Pertwee's third doctor was a match made in heaven, and you could just tell from watching them on screen together that they really bounced off one another. There's something about Delgado's performances that make him so special and really stand out from the rest of the actors to play the master. It's really unfortunate that Roger Delgado died in a car accident in 1973, which meant that the planned story called The Final Game had to be cut short due to the actor's passing. So there you have it. That is my ranking of the masters from least favourite to favourite. Comment down below and tell me what your favourite masters are.